You know, you use a knife for a while and one thing for sure is going to happen. It's going to start to get dull, but we can fix that. Whether you have the Sam the Cooking Guy 7-inch Nakiri essential knife or whether you have, oh, just a little knife that you took from your mother when she stopped cooking, she said I could have it. It's not a big deal. You use a knife long enough and it's going to get dull. And there's nothing worse than a dull knife. I've said before, a dull knife is useless. It ain't that dangerous, people. You hear them say, dull knives are dangerous. And the theory in that is you go to cut something. I'm using the backside. You go to cut something, it's so dull it slips and then you, you hurt something else. But if it's that dull, you're not going to hurt yourself. What you're going to do is F up your food. Sharp knives are very important in the kitchen. Yes, they're dangerous, but they're also very important. So let me show you a couple options that you have. And then the one that I like that I find the easiest because I don't think sharpening a knife is actually the easiest thing ever. There is a simple solution. We'll save that for the end. First up, the whetstone. So the key to these is soaking them in water half an hour or so. This one has two different grits, a finer grit and a coarser grit. And the difference in grit is for how your knife is. You would start using the whetstone on the coarser grit side and then advance to the finer to smooth it out and hone it. And the process is like this. The stone is wet. Your knife blade is on the angle like this. Your fingers are there and you draw it across. I have never personally had a whole lot of success doing this. It's not my preferred method. But you can end up with a knife that starts to get sharp. I just did it a couple times, really made no difference for me. Look, my way of telling if a knife is sharp or not is like this. I take my thumbnail on an angle. If the blade goes in and stops, like puts the brakes on, I've got a sharp enough knife. Like this, it's nothing. If I took this little squishy red tomato and tried to cut, look it. And I'm putting some force on, you can see, I'm leaving a dent, nothing's happening. We're gonna try and fix that. Whetstone, not my favorite, we'll move it out of the way. Next up is the classic sharpening steel, one of the most valuable pieces for sharpening that you can get if you can use it right. We've all seen the beginning of Hell's Kitchen when Gordon Ramsay stands there doing this. I don't even know if I can do it. Like a thousand times really fast. I have no idea if his knife is sharp at the end of that, that macho display of knife sharpening this. A little bit, not great. So a knife guy taught me this way of using it. I take a, a, a towel. I'll put it on the table on a flat surface, point of the steel down, and then using this guard right here that presumably keeps you from whacking off your fingers. <laughs> Don't say it, nobody say it. Use this as an angle to help you guide your knife down and you slide down and pull towards. Slide down and pull towards, same on that side. So you do this three or four times on each side. And you should end up with a sharper knife. I, I, I'm not good at that. I'm okay to do this. <sighs> now while you're sitting there and you're complaining to the person beside you that how is this idiot have two million followers? and he can't sharpen a freaking knife. Well, I didn't go to culinary school. Nobody taught me this. Anything that I know, I've learned for myself. You also don't have two million followers. You have two million subscribers. Oh, God. Oh. And so the day begins with my fucking millennial son reminding me at every turn that I'm using the wrong terminology. I don't know how to use technology Anything in OGY is fucked for me. <sighs> Somebody's gotta help you. I can't wait to. <sighs> so this, the steel, not my preferred method. Now, the cousin of the steel that looks quite a lot like it is the diamond steel or honing steel. Now this 
diamond edge, not real diamonds, but but you can hear the difference. That it's much more coarse. If you have a knife that's really dull, you might want to start with this. Start here, both sides, back and forth, and then finish it off on the steel to take the little burrs off the little bristly edges. Microscopic, small, but there. Now we're starting to get sharp. These two things I sometimes use, but we'll put these over to the side along with the whetstone and come to the little guy that I find the most useful, the pull through. Pull through's classic. In this case, there's three slots, one, two, and three. Number one is what will give you a sharp edge. Number three is what will refine that edge. And in this case, in this particular model, the one in the middle is for a serrated edge, like a bread knife. Don't find that all that often with these guys. And what I like about this one, and we'll put a link to it at the bottom, is that you can dial in the degree, the angle that you, the blade should be at. Uh, Max, why don't you come over here and we can get some close-ups. And by the way, while he's coming over here, this is not sponsored. I just like this one. Nobody's paying me to say that. I like Max, nobody's paying me to say that. I like Chance and Jilly, nobody's paying me to say that. I can say that sometimes. Is there an assumption if I like something that they think it's sponsored? Mm -hmm. I think if, if an episode is sponsored, it'll be obviously sponsored. This episode brought to you by blah, 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 that kind of thing. The way to tell, look in the description. Oh, look in the description. Does it say it's sponsored by a specific company? Also, you would never sponsor something that you don't like. True. Max, I'm waiting for you to come over here. So before you do anything, you want to make sure you're at the right angle for your blade. 18 degrees is what the Sam the Cooking Guy 7-inch Nakiri should be at. So you push down. In this case, you push down. You turn it till you get to 18. And most knives are going to be 18 because that's where the red is and that's where it's marked there, right? Certain knives, perfect. So up here is in the sport range, and I don't know what that's for. Hunting knives, I guess, junk like that things that I wouldn't do. But so, once you've got that, then it's up to the sharpening. This is how this guy works. The knife goes in, the blade goes down, into this first little wedgie slot, and you pull through. Do it near the edge so you don't hit the knife there. Hence the name pull through. Pull through. Depending on how dull your knife is, I like to go maybe eight to 10 times on this rougher side giving you back your sharp blade. And then you come over here to the fine side that sort of just cleans it up a little bit. And this now is a beautifully sharp blade. Okay, so back to our tomato, our squishy little tomato. You saw the result before, let's see what we can do. And Need I say any more, ladies and gentlemen, that cut like a hot knife through butter. That was, as they say in the infomercial world, that was demonstrative. And when you can show a product to be demonstrative, people at home go, oh, holy shit, I must have that. Yes, I could have done it with a Sam knife, but I was showing you the dull knife that I brought back to life using a pull through. That's why I like it. You almost can't make a mistake. And while it's not nearly as fancy as doing this in front of your guests and whatever, it actually works and that's all that matters. People ask about storage, here's the deal. Knife magnet whoosh, on the wall. If you have one knife, probably don't need it. If you've got seven, a serrated bread knife, a paring knife, a chef's knife, a one of these, a, one of those, a bird's beak. Yes, there's a knife called a bird's beak. Uh, then maybe you want like the magnet. Failing that, a knife block is always a good thing. I have a knife block that's magnetic on the sides. I like that. What you don't want to do is take your nice knife that you've cared for, that you've sharpened, that you've not put in the dishwasher, that you've gently washed the handle and then dried it off so it lasts a long time. You don't want to just throw this in a drawer with a whole bunch of other kitchen junk. That's a mistake. You can buy a plastic protective sheath for some of your knives, and then in a drawer it's okay. Then it's not dangerous or getting dull being banged up against other people's knives. 
your people's knives, your knives, your other knives. That was confusing. Then it won't get all dinged up banging against your other knives. So, questions? Anybody? Oh, yes. Slep on. How often do you need to um, sharpen? Excellent your question. Knife? How often do you need to sharpen your knives? How often do you use your knife? If I have a, a, a major cooking session and I'm using my Sam the Cooking Guy knife for four or five hours, before I put it away, I'll sharpen it and then it goes. So the next time I pull it out, boom, it's at the ready, all sharp and ready to go. He said, once again, getting his knife way too close to his ear, like Van Gogh. Was it Van Gogh? Van Gogh, yeah. Van Gogh, I got it. So. You and Van Gogh, the same. Keep your knives sharp. If you have a knife that's very dull, don't let it get very dull again. It's a lot easier to sharpen a knife that needs a little bit than a knife that needs a lot of bringing back. Then at some point you might need a diamond steel, uh, uh, honing thing, whatever. So keep your knives sharp, keep them at the ready. Don't put them in the dishwasher. Don't put a good knife in the dishwasher. Never take this knife at the end of all your kitchen work and put it in the sink. Inevitably, somebody will come along, fill up the sink with soapy water to do all the dishes. You'll reach in to get a plate and you'll cut your finger off. I have personal experience with that. I still feel bad about what I did to some poor chef in Dallas. I don't want to talk about it. It was very bad. But I didn't know. I didn't go to culinary school. And I will milk that excuse as long as I freaking can. Keep your knife sharp. And by the way, we're going to give away two 7-inch Nakiri Sam the Cooking Guy knives. And all you have to do is comment and say something nice. And like the video. And like the video underneath in the comments. If you say something nice about me, that's probably good. If you say something bad about Max, it's probably good too. You're Who knows what you will get? A hundred people are gonna write, say something, something bad about Max. 